No, what? No. There you are. <laughs> hey, everybody. I'm Cinnamon Cooney, your art Sherpa. And today we're celebrating the completion of an art journey that we have taken together. So today is the culmination of a series of videos that we started October 30th. And we have been meeting pretty consistently uh, since then about the beginner acrylic painting journey. This is everything that you just needed to know as a beginner so you could start enjoying that painting process sooner and maybe take about two years of the aggravating learning process off of that curve, that learning curve. So we had uh, intro videos. We had the intro. We had seven um, kind of technique and concept videos. And then we had 10 of the first acrylic paintings uh, my seven years on YouTube told me every beginner should probably do. And we're going to go over a bunch of stuff in this celebration party. But first, everybody give yourselves a hand because no matter where you are today, something you might not know, we have 10,000 people somewhere in this art journey. Really? <laughs> we have 10,000 people going through the program. Some of them are done. Quite a few of them are done. But some of them are just starting. And if you're seeing this on replay, you may have found this years later and have gone through it. So this party is for everybody, for wherever they go. We're going to all celebrate together today. Even if you haven't gotten all the way to the Corgi Bum, we're going to have the party. And then you're going to finish at a pace that's comfortable for you. Because I have to upload things for YouTube. You don't have to paint at YouTube's pace. You can paint at your own pace. That's perfectly okay. Today, I'm going to tell you... Um, how you could get your certificate, mm -hmm. what certificate options that you have. We're going to talk about, so it's so good to see everybody. I see Ambient Landscapes and Ashley and Grace. And I see, uh, I hope I'm saying this right, uh, A. Noor Turker. I see Moderator Blue. Thank you for coming. And Tim and Sandy and Trisha. I really wanted to make sure that this program was something that was uh, would fit into all year so we didn't, really do any holidays or anything we like just did great paintings for all year and the idea was to get you guys to that basic level of knowledge right like for real like a basic level of art knowledge so that when you go into the art store um you can shop and you can buy what you need and if oh. you're taking a course you can um i swear i know what i'm doing do you <laughs> i don't I, I, these buttons. on the mic is my husband john he's switching like, the the um <laughs> I'm the just... things and he's he's looking right now he's he's trying he's got to get his coffee is really what it is <laughs> it's the party because you did it you did it you painted the paintings um so first things to know the moderators are going to have a link you can see it in the description below and it's on the beginner acrylic painting page and at the end of this video when we walk through everything we've accomplished i will actually take you a video walkthrough of how to do the quiz form to get your free certificate so there's a free certificate and that free certificate, uh, when you complete the form and upload your paintings, you can upload them as a single image or you can upload them individually or you can upload them as a video. I'm completely fine with that. But you'll get an email with a link and you get a certificate, which you see here, a printable one that you fill out yourself and a Facebook profile pic, which I have optimized in a Facebook banner. If you're a Facebook person, you can also just use them anywhere you want. Print them out, whatever you want to do with them is completely fine. Um, and that's just available to you whether you found this video and you came through from October 30th to now, November 27th, or you just found us through the time travel of YouTube and you're like, I just finished now. Can I still get the certificate? Yes, you can. So yeah. we'll walk you through that process at the end and tell you all the most important things right off the bat. For those of you guys who love to get on things right away, because I know you exist out there, um, just make sure you give us an email that when we reach out to you, you receive the email. Yes, we have <laughs> not, to be able to communicate. I'm not selling into anybody. I'm not doing anything with it. And the part where we even ask to maybe share your artwork or your story or your feedback, that's an opt in or out selection. So you just, just don't have to worry about any of that stuff. Um, you know, really, it's been kind of a it's been kind of a journey. This has been we, fantastic. I've been saying that on YouTube. Now everybody says it. I've been saying it on YouTube for a while now. There is this art journey. There's these first steps, and there's nothing more amazing than being a beginner and having a fully empty cup um, artists that come into this ready to take in all the information um, it's such an honor to get to be that initial guide because uh, if I give you guys flexible enough thinking if I help you guys figure out the core fundamentals of what makes your process work 
if I uh, give you these really essential introductory ideas and techniques and skills, then not only can you paint with me on my one who paintings and two who paintings pretty easily, but you can go other places and not have an experience of feeling um, like you're out of place, like a fish out of water. And uh, right now I'm letting John get some coffee. I'm going to go over to YouTube for a second and say, hi, this is live, live today. Live, live, live. And I want to say thank you to Jennifer Bowman for thanking us for the amazing course. And welcome LL to custom emoji chat. You guys have a one hoot emoji. And we've had, uh, we've had a bunch of people join our membership. Thank you for being in the memberships. Memberships are fun. Plus, you know, I make emojis every time YouTube gives me a new emoji or we update them for you know what we're doing. Um, this has been bigger than I expected and John expected. Uh, we just thought we were asking ourselves, what could we do for you guys coming into the holidays? Uh, and what could we gift to the to our art community that would be the most useful coming in? And that was just revisiting those beginner core concepts that we initially looked at in the big art quest in 2016. It might've been earlier than that it's been it might have been 2015 2014 we've been at this a minute for those of you that remember pairs if you were one of the original big art quest pairs throw up your two pairs and do your pair groaning um i see both many of you guys talking about the the fullness of your cup i'll tell you um if you're an artist or starting out artist or an experienced artist my biggest advice to you is um never be rigid in your thinking and always approach things like you're new, really open, really ready to absorb it like a sponge. There are a few things for safety tips in the studio that we have to be real cautious and present to. But I think everything in art, the more that we can be open minded, the more that we can be flexible in our thinking, the more it benefits us in our personal creative practice because we never get painted into a corner. <laughs> Uh, yeah, actually doing what no other teacher does on YouTube and coming across, uh, other platforms for that matter for free. So I do want to say this and we're going to say this at the end. This is free to the world. We're in 250 countries. Um, that's perfect. Just leave that there for a second. And, um, we, it is our mission to share art with people because I think people are better when they're creative. Just overall, I don't know what's the right answer for other people. I know what the right answers are for me. But I know that because I have time to be creative and so I can hear myself think. And I, I believe that in a creative process, individuals can hear themselves think and hear and tune out the noise of the world and start to hear what their personal truth is. And I think more now than ever, being able to hear ourselves think and get back to our reasoning and getting back to our logic and really understanding who we are and what we need in a compassionate, connected way, art can give that gift. And and that's such a fluid thing for all over the world because we all have such different needs. I think it's it's really something we can do. We do that with the help of patrons. So everyone throw up some hands for patrons right now because we have the weirdest patronage, I think, out there. And our patrons are amazing. And they, they are the ones who make these programs possible and make it so that we can just work like crazy all November uh, and do a program like this. So I just love the patrons. And I want to thank everybody. And Diana Riley, thank you. Great teacher, Cinnamon John. Love how you guys share our wisdom. Thank you guys so much. I really appreciate that. So the course at the beginning, in the beginning, after having done the Big Art Quest many years, uh, through several editions, after having done three acrylic Aprils, I can't believe we're going to be coming up on year four this April. <sighs> I'm already starting on it. One of the things that we learned that everybody needs is this intro course, which is how to find it, what it is, what to expect, what materials do you need, what exchanges can you have, where is anything on the website, where are my resources? So that was the first big new thing that we kind of introduced to this course. And the intro video really did showed you how to find everything on the website, gave you three or four or five different locations that your resources could be stored. And we also created a new landing spot on the website for the beginner acrylic course that is your one and done click space. So that was really important and new to this. Um, and, you know, we, I actually planned a curriculum um, really cohesively. When I did the original Big Art Quest, it was sort of like loosey goosey. I'm like, what do we want to learn about this week, friends? But this time I'm like, all right, been on YouTube seven years. I know there's some stuff you guys need to know. 
So this told you guys when to expect the classes, where they were, where your resources are, what's going on. Um, going on, yeah, Monterey Cat Red. Yeah, Big AQ is 2016. It was, it was some early days, wasn't it? I don't know what I had going on. All right, next one. So then um, the first thing I got into was how to set up your home studio. And there were, I made a list of my wish list of things that I wanted to share with you, what I wanted to cover. Um, of course, the first big one is, uh, do you need to be sitting or standing? Do you need an easel or a table? Um, stuff about safety and positions, about not hunching over your artwork and painting on a pillow or on the floor hunched over. Um, why easels or tilts or things like that were important. We talked about light and we really got into light because lighting is one of those hidden things that can cause you problems. Uh, in the beginning, that's so fixable and so changeable and so transformative. So I wanted to talk about lighting. I wanted to give you guys an idea of easels that I liked, about how to consider your space, um, concepts about safety with pets and family. I wanted to make sure that we had a segment talking about um, adaptive uh, art supplies so that if you had any mobility um, limitations for whatever reason that you understood there was this whole segment of art supplies and resources um, you know across the board and kind of introduce that concept I think if I do this again I'll go deeper into that a little bit because the feedback was I, I just assumed I was saying something everybody knew but apparently not so I'll definitely go into those resources deeper and um, if I do this in the future hmm? I'm never John's talking to me. So uh, I wanted to go into that. I wanted to talk about um, paint water disposal, which is the first time I touched on that, which of course panicked everybody. But it, it, it's a good beginning. Um, and again, if I do this again, I'll probably demonstrate paint water disposal. I, I've learned even from this course. Every time I do a course with you guys, I learn. I, I evolve. I, I understand concepts that maybe I didn't because... I can have an idea of how you guys will learn something and then we go through a course and I'm like, oh man, I need to change like five things like next time so much. So these are ever evolving iterative, like our paintings, right? They're ever evolving iterative journeys. Like for me, this whole course, my biggest predominant feeling was if I had a TARDIS and I could go back in time and just start my YouTube channel over <laughs> from here. But unfortunately, wisdom only comes from experience. <laughs> and so there's no way to do that. <laughs> However, wisdom is that gift. I'm ready to go on. And then we wanted to talk to you guys about acrylic paint. Because you guys need to know about the paint. I will let John pull this up. So we talked about mm. the things that beginners don't know they need to know about acrylic paint. There's a Stuff lot of Stuff like that. levels and tiers and bodies, um, common problems, how to read tubes, how to understand safety information. Um, we talked about primary palette, like how you would set that up. We kind of went into just what you've got to know about acrylic paint. And, and there's a lot to know. Um, there's such a variety of acrylic paint and it, it, it mimics it's such a chameleon in its nature. It mimics so many other mediums and it's so versatile. And when it's great, it's so great. And when it fails, it so fails. <laughs> and just understanding um, what just. you as a consumer are up against. And I did make some recommendations in this particular video on companies that I personally recommend. And it was interesting because um, my non-recommendation ended up ringing as loud as my recommendation, which I don't know how I'll correct for if I do this again, but I definitely want to correct for it because sometimes I just haven't tried to paint. Right. So I don't know if I can recommend it or not. I have brands that I know I can recommend at this moment who are quality, who are consumer focused, who really come through mm -hmm. and who, who I don't see a lot of complaints about in group. And then I have brands that I, um, I'm familiar with, but maybe there's something going on with them right now. Maybe there's a lot of complaints in group. Maybe there's, I, I've had some consumer issues with them that I can't really at this moment recommend them, but it doesn't mean that that's true forever. So that was an interesting thing that my recommendation as well as my non-recommendation was so like resonated with you guys so much. Let's take a, I'm going to take a look real quick at YouTube unless you've got some stuff for me, John. I don't know. Let's um, see here. And if you're on Facebook, hi, I'm on Facebook. Um, Darlene says, I cannot thank you enough for coming into my life. And Darlene, I can't thank you enough for coming into our lives. All of you guys have changed our lives as well. It's just 
it, it you can't say how much. It's you just Oh, um, is there mini books for the intro, mixing paints, and so forth? So we're getting these mini books were harder to put together because um they just were. It was weird. We yeah, are took a little they're, bit more. They're they're probably gonna be releasing in big chunks, is what it's gonna be. We have two out on the file section. You can get to the mini books and they're out on the files. And then probably a grip of them will come out and all the 10 step-by-step paintings will come out. So if you're here in time travel, um, you're going to have mini books as a resource. So whenever there's a course where people come through with me in real time, yeah, they're like pioneers, man. They're doing it without mini books. They're doing it without every resource. It's if true. You're, if you're not aware, mini books are a written out uh, companion to the videos that are free for you to download. That's right. And yeah. I think for the last year, you've done many books with just... Since January. Of, yeah. Actually, it's, I started in December, I think. And it... Yeah, that every, sounds about right. We have so many. I'm gonna, I, I'm, if there's time, there's we're going to do an a anthology. look back at the end of the year so you guys have some sense of how many paintings we did and how many mini books there are now because it kind of freaks me out. There's a lot. It's kind of amazing. Yeah. Uh... The paint, mine gave me so many problems. You know, the thing is, like, with paint, it can be it can be our greatest issue, right? Like, the paint can be a problem. Mm-hmm. It's the fun part, but it's also sometimes the problem part. You know, it definitely can be kind of an issue. All right, let's go on and get back into my little notes, because now I've learned to do these live things with notes. All right, then we went into canvas, panels, and acrylic paper. Learned a lot from this video. I wanted to cover a lot of information, give you guys like, just, hey, what are the parts of a canvas? What are those wood things in there? Um, do you need a gesso? Do? How do you finish paper for painting? And then how does that apply to making your own canvas for Mason? And we covered some stuff. Interestingly enough, things that threw people um, was when to gesso, when not to gesso, when the gap mm. was important, and... Uh, what the... What's the gap? What's the gap? What's the door lens? So I, I definitely, um, if we update this edition, I will go into that deeper. I feel like we covered it, though. Yeah. I do feel like we covered it. I don't feel like you're missing out on any information, but I think that that's, those are the questions that I answered most. Whenever I have a video and I get a lot of questions, those go into the sort of uh, filing system for me to make sure even as I go forward teaching in my regular classes that I add that information as a question in the ether that I know is out there and I can preemptively answer it for a viewer. So that's the other reason these kind of courses are great for me because I can sit there and, and give that extra little bonus of information in that blurb that I do in a video. So we covered that, covered Dorland's wax, covered, um, you know, just those fundamentals. The fact that you can paint acrylic on paper like watercolor. We demoed uh, prepping paper two ways with the three coats of acrylic and the GAC and the gesso. The GAC. Um, uh, one thing I would go back is maybe do a whole thing on gesso. I think gesso is maybe one of the most misunderstood art products out there. I think uh, it's just misunderstood. Yeah. I think uh, it's unclear for a lot of people why it's there and when it needs to be used and when you can skip it and why you even have it and how you modify it and what, like, I would say like 2% of artists even out there know what the best gessos on the market are and why they're yeah. awesome. And so I may sometime in the future do something about that and share that information with you. There's so, it's so hard to, to get all this information to you guys because it's just a lot. That you need to know as a beginner. Yeah. <laughs> you do need to That's know this. That's why we this. made this course. Otherwise the, you just guess? stand there hopelessly in the art aisle going, just so, just so, just so do I need it? What says like, surface prep? Do I need to prep all surfaces? Is this surface prep? What does it make a difference? Does it make a difference? And then and then when you use it and it does something like make your canvas thirsty and you're like, I hate gesso. Right. You know, and you have all these experiences. So I think that these courses are such an opportunity to get us into a conversation. It's important for us as creatives. Um, because I don't want to just show you how to do an easy painting, right? Um I want to show you how easy paintings are done. I want to show you how you can make your own. I want to show you how to be your own painter, not, not paint like me, but to paint like you. So this kind of stuff is very foundational for that. Um, and that was really good. I'm ready to go on to brushes. To brushes. Ba-doop. Brushes. So much to say about brushes. Brushes being such a frustrating thing for artists because. You can't. If you rush took, over it. If you took this class, you realize there's no standards. So it's just very 
emotionally things are labeled some companies are very like respectful of the buyer and they like really use like some sort of consistency across lines and handles we talked about long handles short handles filaments where they come from how they're made what you guys need to know what you're looking for at we match like what brush goes to what type of paint we did right like so we really why? covered some stuff and and what you'd want to use for heavy body paint what the shapes are and what the different shapes are for like what would you use that brush for why is there a difference between a flat and a braid uh parts of a brush like we really came out knowing a core amount of brush information which when you know this, then you know you've got to go as a consumer as much as possible in store to feel things so you can figure out your favorite brands and then buy online because it's so impossible to buy this stuff blind. It is. Because of the lack of standardization. All right. Then we went on to painting techniques every beginner needs to know. And you guys really need to know all these painting techniques. They're really important for just being able to do your first paintings. You know, it's like learning the alphabet, your ABCs. It's just, these are the ABCs of what makes everything come together. And um, that's always fun to put together because, uh, and, and I didn't expect this, but again and again and again, I was really pleased to see that there were things that artists who'd been painting for a minute got out of it. That's the thing that I took away from this course I didn't expect. That artists have been painting for a minute, got something out of it, mm -hmm. you know. Um, I feel like I have a good amount of knowledge that I've accrued it and like garnered it together. And I do feel like in, in social experience experiences with other artists, I feel like I always have a gem or two to drop, but mm -hmm. it was nice to see that that was true remotely. Um, and, uh, it felt really good to see that I, it was just helping everybody, you know, kind of shore up these core techniques, these beginning spaces. I'm going to go back into YouTube and look at the things and look at, look at them. I like to, we learned in Acrylic April, you got to go back over what you learn because sometimes people are so in it, they don't even know what they did, right? Sometimes you're so in the classes, you don't realize. I did, oh gosh, it's um, it's almost 30 hours, right, mm -hmm. of classwork that you've done. So you you did some learning. This was some education. And it, was, it was sequential and things built into the next thing. And so there was real foundational learning here. I know I went to art school and I was not taught many of these things. <laughs> it's cool. Not different mad. things, but not these things maybe. So hard to, to even like know what to cover. I was just, I learned a lot being here this year. It, it was, I learned a lot. Yeah, you guys learned a lot. I think that that's been kind of like fantastic. Load a brush. Man, I think I could do hours of load a brush because as we covered. Is that the next one? Filaments of paint, filaments, bodies of paint, brush your studio house. conditions, the surface that you're painting on, the paint that you're painting with all impact that load. And finding, and this became the most important thing, the Goldilocks zone, what that means. Um, when you, when you go to apply for the certificate, you'll, uh, there's a bit of a quiz. Um, and here's the thing to know about the quiz guys. And I should have said this right off the bat. I am not grading you just answer the questions to the best of your ability and upload your pictures. Um, uh, I mean, really, this is just a way for us to know what you guys got out of the course and what we need to do a better job on next time. Yeah, it's kind of so, my feedback. Yeah. It's, and, it's like, if you didn't understand a question, it's okay. That's me. That's not yeah. you. We just, that's me. And if a lot of you didn't understand the question, that's really me. And I take an E on that and really think about it. Right. So, yeah. This is, we will adjust the course and make adjustments and things. So it's, don't be afraid. Just to answer yeah. the questions. Just answer the questions. Um, I try to put enough humor in them. I mean, here's the thing. They're very easy. They're, the purpose of the quiz is to help you take a pre moment in your presence and realize I learned a lot. And like I learned all these things. It's open book. It is open book, and I set the quiz so that you could go back and change answers later. We have many books that have all the answers. Right, and the videos. And so, you know, uh, and I just tried to help you guys get a sense of like, oh, I learned something. I helped to give me a teacher a sense of like how things kind of, how the course worked for you guys. And then also um, for, you, for you guys to have a real present minute to go, yeah, it's a one hoot certificate that officially gives me, I'm now an artist, one hoot artist, right? Um, but guys, this is a big deal. Like you learned a lot. You did a lot of work. It's a huge deal. So that was, that's a big thing, but just know that you're not, you're not, I'm not grading you. No. 
I'm, we're just it's a participation question. Participating in these, I mean, they're mandatory. Like you've got to upload your pictures to get the certificate, or you've got to answer the questions. You just don't have to answer them correctly. Right. There's this is this is just you just got to show up and say I hello. Uh, we, Crystal Blake, we're gonna um, talk about how the pictures are uploaded into the form, and then uh, if if everything fails, like what you could do to work around that, because we're here to work with you. We're not always. Yeah. I have no interest in keeping you from your certificates at all. So it's super. I want you guys to celebrate your accomplishments. And we're going to find a way to make sure you can. Mm -hmm. um, that's like important. All right. Let's go on to brush strokes. Ooh, so brush strokes. you have techniques and you have all these concepts that we covered. But what to do with all that is where brush strokes come into play. And so we covered core brush strokes, contour. We covered S strokes. We covered curves and commas. We covered this sort of like idea and concept. Um, and then we looked at how do we take those stroke concepts and turn them into things? How do they become things? How does a touch pull stroke become a thing? Right? Tear stroke. What's a touch pull stroke? Right. What is it? Like, is how, how, how do these teardrops, how do these things, how do the grass, how do these things happen? And so we just kind of covered how you take those techniques and concepts and you pull them together to create stuff. And we kind of covered some core stuff that you're probably going to, you know, you were going to create in this course. And then the 10 paintings were actually designed to help you learn these core techniques too, to enforce what you were learning through this process. So, uh, D, will I finish those monthly gnome paintings I promised for 2021? Yeah. Yeah, I am. I'm kind of a completionist. I am. They're coming. They are. They, they have are. their it's own been a whole, place been a whole thing in fact other people were like i now paint astronomes <laughs> just painting their own um but yes i'm gonna finish all of them and and continue on with fun stuff like that i think the what i learned from that is that i've got to do all 12 ahead of time yep so that when youtube comes to eat my face or it gets weird out there or family stuff happens or life happens i have them there just to release and the whole program is cohesive so if you ever hear me announce a program like that again <laughs> that will be the difference in that program from the from the, the gnomes is that they're done ahead and just release monthly they'll be pre-gnomed they'll be pre-gnomed but those i am going to catch up with i've done the designs i like them there's a mini book that i want to produce with them and a calendar and there were things i wanted to do with the gnomes so, yeah, I'm going to finish them, definitely. And I'm also not over gnomes yet. Yeah. All right. So then we went on to color mixing. This, I, I think I'm the most proud of, of the whole series. I was proud of everything, but this I'm the most proud of. Yeah. Because I bridge that gap of how you read a color wheel and how that applies to what you mixed and what those words you use actually mean. The wheel of color. Right. So... It's not just how do you get to secondary, tertiary colors. What does that actually functionally mean? And how it doesn't really matter what your primaries are. Um, if you understand this wheel, you understand bias, you understand tint tone shade, you understand this and can use it with a wheel, you can anything. Um, in fact, I think I'm going to go on and probably make a wheel of my own, like to, to build into this. Like I think that was my takeaway was... <laughs> they're gonna be a sherpa wheel so we have, the wheel will probably be a small project that you guys and all of our patrons will be involved in because it's going to require a little bit of a tricky trick to make it happen yeah but it's you guys can help it happen so we know yeah. we, we're going to work with you we're going to work with you to get the wheel oh crystal's loving my bracelet it's my owl i got my owl and my owl owl and owl, owl. Oh, no. so we're, we're one hooting it today um so this course this part because this is Here's the number one thing people think that they should be able to do that they cannot do until they're at the end of their two hoot, beginning of their three hoot journey is paint from a photograph, right? Because if you're at the place where you're like, I don't know what colors to mix, that painting isn't happening, even if people tell you. Um, and it's such an area of frustration. But if I can get you guys mixing these colors this way, like we did in this program, and we learn to use the wheel, you are so much accelerated into just looking at that sunset and getting your wheel out and be like, I think this is what I have. You'll understand it. If you did the wheel class, if you did this color mixing class and my color chart, then you don't ever have to ask anybody what colors you need to mix again. Because you look at the colors that you have in your color chart and your wheel and you go, these are my colors and this is how I get to that red. Yeah. So that's that. This course I'm super proud of because this is the foundation of looking at your trip photo and going, I think that blue is a little bit green and I get it this way. 
And if you can get it with primaries, you can get it with, with convenience colors. <laughs> convenience colors, we covered what those are, right? That's when you buy a green. You didn't mix it, you bought it. It's convenient, you know? So that was kind of fun. All right. And then we go on to, and we'll go to the, the hand for a second. We go to hands for a second. Well, no, let's let's do the thumbnail and then we'll go to hands. We'll go thumbnail, hands, thumbnail, hands, thumbnail, hands. Does that sound good? Sure. Okay, I don't. I'm just making it up. Okay. So we went to our first painting. Um, I initially did this first design for Lifebook, um, and uh, which is a year long course I do with Tamara Laporte. It's an amazing course. Uh, and ambient landscapes. Where's the color chart, please? If one of the moderators can get ambient a uh, link to how to make a color chart. And also the link on how to find the grids and everything. <laughs> You're going to love it. Um, it's life-changing for artists. I, like, I always make color charts now. So I have this painting. And um, this one was the first one. I felt like this was a good one to pick because it gave you the idea of how you can lay things out on a canvas yourself. It gave you a sense of background, filling in areas, creating zones, creating painting spaces, right? We did some uh, implied line, we did light fine line, we did full fills, we did a little bit of value and shading. Just a nice introduction to those concepts that we, you know, kind of introduced you to through the first seven classes. And this was when everybody jumped in. We have a lot of people at this stage already who've gotten at least through their cats. And the cats have been great. If you go into the Facebook group, and look at the cats. The cats yeah. have been great. Ambient when was you get asking, a chance, I will mic with my coffee. Ambient are hex what? colors number are hex color numbers related to pigment colors? Pigment color numbers. And in no. advertising the art, they are. If you're in an advertising art field, yes. Um, but for everybody else, no. I actually studied advertising art, and so yes, for for me, <laughs> there was a way to relate a hex code to a Prismacolor pen to pigment. There but was a way not, to relate it, but not directly related. Yeah, they, there is a there is a way to measure one one because they both have an empirical measurement, so yeah. to speak. But they were not and, derived. And the, from there's each a other. hex that goes to a CMYK that goes to a, a Pantone colors. There's actually a way to match those all up, and that's important in an advertising campaign or in a design campaign. Like if you're um, putting together uh, home and bedding, right? Knowing those is really important, so that the bedding that you made matches the print copy that you're putting out there, matches the online promotions that you put out there. This is probably not anything anybody needed to know. It's just something that I know. So those are really important in that way. And then it also means my monitor, you think pigment is a hot mess. My monitor and your monitor do not look the same. They are not set the same. And so our experience of color, already subjective enough in our eyes as it is, is just completely unrelated in that space and then if you add printers into that or output into that so hex code or any numerical uh, um, coloring system allows us to not make uh, massive color mistakes in the output of these product lines where there needs to be a co that's how mcdonald's yellow looks mcdonald's yellow um, how it applies how how it applies to this is this handle with a red handle for my art sharp brushes which are no longer that what's left out there is left out there. This is YouTube red. I couldn't get the brush maker to remotely believe that purple or rainbow or sparkle, sparkle was a good idea. So I did YouTube red. And I know what that is because the hex code. Um, and so that's how companies create uniformity. And you can use that in art uh, in a variety of ways, but it's a little bit down the road. But it is a good and interesting question. Mm -hmm. All right. Let's go on to the birds. Okay. See here. Two birds. So this one we learned about a couple of things. We learned about paint layers and dry brushing. Um, this was and really how to handle transparency. So this lesson, while being a cute, adorable set of birds um, with the moon, was really about how do I handle a very transparent red or yellow? Could have been either. And how do I layer um, colors, right? When does it need to be dry? When does it need to be wet? We worked on our first introduction to some contour lining, right? Really got in there some contouring um, to create graphic drama. And we also worked on value. 
right? So these were concepts that we were introduced to in the seven classes. And then we turn, we put them into practice with our painting. Crystal's saying that uh, we should have been able to do them on Canvas. And I just want to remind you guys, you can do these later on Canvas. You can do them at any time when you're ready for it. If today is not the day, maybe in the future, mm -hmm. maybe in the future. Oh, Amy's like, feed the birds, tuppence a bag, tuppence a bag, tuppence a bag. Alba's saying this one was tricky for me. This one was tricky. And while I did provide traceables for everything, I didn't demo the traceables. I demoed freehanding. So we learned a little bit about how do we rough in placement? What tools do we use to uh, guesstimate object placement in a canvas? And what are the things to avoid? So these were things that, um, you know, we got to really cover. And I really love seeing your birds. Interestingly enough, Here's the thing that, uh, as a teacher, you think versus what ended up being reality. I thought this was the bird that was going to give everybody trouble. <laughs> and it was this little dude that I thought everybody was going to, like, sail through. Not, not that your birds weren't all perfectly cute. They were. But there's a, there's a thing that happens for, for students that I've seen that they perceive that they have not done it right. I don't know. There's a perception. It, it, and there's a common consciousness of it, right? Mm -hmm. So there was a perception collectively of a little fat bird sitting on a branch, which I felt you guys all hit. But many of you were like, I love this upper bird, but I'm not sure my lower bird had it. And I think it was, I think we should just accept his, his fluffy fat little baby. Yeah. <laughs> Personally, I do. I think you guys did really great. But that was interesting because I thought that's where I was going to hear it. And I heard it there. And I was like, huh. So now, every time you guys... See, it's great when you guys say your truth because I go in group, I read everything. That's I'm liking it. Sometimes I'll like it twice because I'm in my Facebook profile and then I'm in my personal profile. So that's still me just switching profiles and getting confused about where I am. Um, but it's really because I'm like, how did I do? And so when you guys say this was hard, then I make notes and I'm like, I start brainstorming and how do I make it easier next time? Mm hmm. All right, how do I make it easier for you? Ready? Move on to the next one. Da, 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 in the mason jar. So one of the first things, and I, what I wanted to just get out of the way, is gestural flowers and leaves, right? Because that just is aggravating to all new painters everywhere. And uh, see-through stuff. See-through stuff always, one of the first things that just breaks a new artist's brain is how do I pay something, paint something that I see through, is transparent. And so... This was the first one where I introduced to you that we don't paint what we can't see. We paint what we can, which is we paint the reflections. Can't paint what we don't see, the transparent part that we don't see. We paint the stems that we can see. We paint the reflections that we can see. We paint this butterfly, which gives placement to the thing. We paint a reflection coming out from under the glass. We paint the way the flowers go through here. So it's actually some very complicated. I do this every acrylic April. I hit my students with very complicated concepts in a simple way, like week one this year, especially I did. I was like, oh, here's all the basics of water landscape concepts real easy. And then, then we're going to get into it like super intense for the whole month. But <laughs> everybody went ah, all the way down. <laughs> Wait, sometimes this understanding this day one gets you to that realistic wine pour painting 30 painting 50 whenever you get there but you have to get this down to get there to paint a wave to paint a waterfall to paint water drops to paint you know any of that stuff that we all want to paint because it's so engaging as artists reflections and water we have to understand what it is we're actually painting when the wave crests and the light's coming through it and the foam is coming over what are we painting Right. When it open up, opens up and becomes transparent and flings back from her hair, what are we painting? Right. That concept started here. Right. So how is glass painted? That's, the, that's what that video introduced. Transparency. Okay. Yeah, I'm okay. ready to go on. Do, do, do. So Lindsay Herbert. See, that's the great class for Lindsay right there. Is how is glass painted? Um, so this one. Uh, I love this. Um, on this one. Oh, I gave you the wrong thumbnail because I did a lighter moon on that. That was the original design, and then I changed that design. It's okay. We'll go to the desk. So on this one, we were talking about a gesture of line. You guys were actually learning gesture and reflection and the way um, directionality of line creates placement in space on the canvas. So we have this circle, right, which is the moon. It's very bright. So the value is helping us understand that this is a glowing moon at night. But the radiating curvature of the brushstrokes going out creates a sense of radiating moonlight. 
the um, flat horizontal brush stroke kind of creates a sense of water. The fact that the horizon line is level gives us a sense this is a body of water. And then these horizontal brush strokes coming down, capturing the tops of what would be waves, glittering, is light reflected on water. The movement of the brush strokes here on these long lines gives us the sense that these reeds are blowing in the wind. And right down to the curvature of the dragonflies is gesture. Gesture is everything in art. It's what makes your people look interesting. It's what makes your tree look interesting. It's the, the flow of the line that gives movement to the painting. And pretty complicated concept, but we introduce that right here. You know, so when you're going there, that's what you're getting, you know, is that sense of, do you see why I gave you guys a passing certificate? Because y'all earned it. Because mm -hmm. this was not some small stuff. It's your 10 first paintings where I very sneakily snuck in a bunch of really important art concepts. So one and two who paintings stop being so like, what do are, what are we, what are we doing? Because you're like, oh yeah, I got to curve this line to make it look bendy bendy. All right, next one. Dur, 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 dur. So this one, um, we use some concepts and it's not completely and totally unseen out there. You'll see stuff coming back from like the 1900s that kind of cover this concept, which is, um, and even before, which is where we use um, value and placement. And, and I, I don't remember who it was who totally caught this, which is this is also how we do distant mountains, right? Mm -hmm. Where we're using line where we're using value, the hue of the color, how light or dark it is to create a sense of atmospheric depth. Like we're actually painting atmospheric perspective here. And then the way that we choose to uh, light that, we talk about its closeness to the light source. And we also did that on the balloon. So if we go down to the thing, we'll talk about this a little bit more. So in landscape painting, there are two concepts of lighting and, and, and it's very complicated stuff, but I actually taught both of them to you, which is the radial and the, and the, the horizontal kind of going up the vertical. So in sky, uh, depending on the light source and your viewpoint as the viewer and atmospheric perspective, the sky tends to be generally, not always, but generally darker at the top and lighter at the bottom, which we did this gradation. Very important skill in all painting. You just got to get it down. But also, if the if your light source is viewable at all, and 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 we kind of covered it in several lessons before this, but now we get into where they both come together. There's a radial light that comes out, and things that are within the space of this radial light in your landscape will be warmer in their colors. Something that you know now because you learned how to read the color wheel, warmer in their colors, and then as they get further away from the light source, get cooler. This is the core of landscape painting. Landscape painting, whether you're painting along with, you know, in, in with me or anybody else or out in the mountains, just plain air painting. These are the things that you're observing. And so by doing this thing where there's a light bank of clouds, a darker bank of clouds and the darkest bank of clouds. Right. And this is like something the poster paint, the travel poster painters really kind of pioneered. Um, we say these things are back and coming forward. Right. So we learn that value and color saturation and depth place an object more distant or closer to us. Also, we talked about here's our light source. So therefore, we learned where a cloud would be lit. We didn't think about the cloud as a white fluffy thing in the sky. We thought about the cloud as a amorphous form, which we kind of practice some concepts of cloud shapes so we can break that 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 initial kind of hurdle to clouds. And then we lit them in the correct space. And then we did the solar flare here, but it was to show you guys how to light something off of your light source. So you guys learned some pretty complicated lighting. I didn't know if you knew that you learned that, but you did know you learned it. And then Crystal's like, the balloons and the clouds were difficult. They're difficult, right? Our art is like anything else. It, there's things that kind of are easy, and then there's our trig. But it, here's the difference between art and all other things. Art is always fun if you let it be. If you just relax with yourself and, and know that you will get there, if not this painting, some future painting, it will be fun. The only time you will suck your joy is if you compare yourself to somebody else and measure yourself as less. I can fall into that. Everyone can fall into that trap. Um, that will definitely take the joy right out of your studio. Or if you become hypercritical of yourself, creating some arbitrary standard that you set forward and then you berate yourself for not achieving that arbitrary standard at some arbitrary time that you expected yourself to achieve it. 
And, and it sounds funny, but it's what people do. <laughs> Sam, just pull up a little soapbox, like, Shh, come on, I got something to say. Do, 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 well, no, I mean, it's like the number one thing. I, you know, somebody's like brand new to painting, and they're like, I suck oh, at this. You're, you're, that's what you do here. I just think it's cute oh. when you do it. <laughs> you're just like, I got something to say, bring it over here. I mean, I just don't know how you guys even pull those time frames and goals out of the air. Like, I know I didn't set them for you, because I would never do that to you. Because that's just a trap for misery. And I don't try not to set misery traps for my students. But you guys are really brilliant at saying, I'm supposed to know this. This was supposed to be easy for me. And I'm supposed to get it by now. That's not what you have to do. You just have to know, if not this painting, some future painting, it's going to click for me. Mm -hmm. Some class. huh? This is enjoyable learning. It's, it's enjoyable learning. As it goes. If you can relax with yourself and get out of that rigid thinking and get really flexible, someday in your car you're going to be sitting and looking at a sunset and go, I get it. Horizontal, the horizontal gradient and the radial lighting, I get it. There'll be some moment, some fishing trip, some TV show that you're watching that does a vista. There'll be some aha moment. I don't know when it's going to happen for you. I just know it can and will happen for you as long as you don't give up on yourself. That's the thing I know, especially doing the daily painting. I've learned that with daily painters. Like you can get there if you don't give up on yourself and you can keep it fun. You can get anywhere in your art. Shall we do the peacock feather? <laughs> so this was about um, dealing with the layering of paint, right? Which did immediately show you guys that some of your yellows were not making it. And for many of you, if you do this painting and your yellow is just so completely transparent, you may want to upgrade your yellow. That would be one of the things that I did see. I saw several people that I felt like that might be a color they want to find in a different paint line because it was performing way under, right? Though we have been learning how to handle overly transparent colors. We learned mm -hmm. that over at the birds, right? You have the skills. We have the skills. So we did some of that layering here, but this was about directionality of line and working on the curve and flow of strokes, which is really hard for beginners and really essential. How to recreate shape and curve with a stroke. You guys see how we're doing that there? I see it. Yes. And see, Blanton, this was the hardest painting. This I thought was going to be the easiest for y'all and ended up being the hardest. That mm -hmm. is not, I mean, a lot of people were like, what? A lot of line control. It was a lot of line control and it was a lot... This Subtle. painting was kind of like the test of your paint. Oh, man. Yeah, right. I didn't even think about that. It tested your paint. Did your Is your paint up to snuff? It's like the Sphinx Gate. Yeah, a little bit. And if your paint was really, really, really making you miserable, um, I'm not saying don't use it up. I'm not saying any of that. But that's something to think about, like maybe as you can, changing brands are going through and sometimes a brand will be great in five colors and just be terrible at one color like way back in the day liquitex um professional just really had a terrible cadmium yellow hue it was just super bad and i'm not even sure it was hands of yellow it was not my favorite is what i'll say and golden and a bunch of companies have had a really good cadmium hue for years so it's like a doable thing mm -hmm. and there are other colors that liquitex just does brilliantly so I was like, I don't know what was up. They fixed it. Now it's cadmium free and it's completely fixed. And it's great now. At the time though, hot mess. Hot. So if you had, if you had all the Liquitex paints, you'd be having great experience until you got to the hue. And then you'd be like, what is this? It is the dullest color. Now with cadmium free, you won't have any problems with it at all. But this is just like in paint companies, that's true. Tamara, all of my colors were very transparent. A min minimum of two layers to match. So I would say Tamara... Two layers, if you can get it to match within two layers, you're okay. Um, that's student paints are, you know, it's not uncommon. Even with the, I use the abstract uh, Sennelier paint, which is a really good economy paint. Yeah. Right, which is this brand right here. And they load it pretty well, but I still have to do two colors sometimes, right? It's not. However, I saw people, it wasn't going to matter how many layers. They were going to have to paint it white. And paint they were having to there was no layering that would ever get them there and that was that was a failing in the color not them in any way not a failing in them at all all right are we ready to go on to the next thing we learned i think we do let's see here because i can never stop bothering people with water <laughs> i just can't which is line directionality and how it creates form and landscape is what we learned here 
So you took some of this, everything that we learned before, and we used very simplistic values, the directionality of line, and we and um, the kind of textural nature of brushes, and created raw, very, three very different things, which is super important in landscape, which is your your leafy things, your bushy things, your falling water, and you'll notice how the vertical lines made the water fall, and the horizontal and shorelines made the water flow and how the little splashy lines made the water splash is really what the whole thing was about and how we used value and sharp edges to create forms like rocks so this is this is a lot of your landscape misery if you can get this core down you can make your landscapes a much happier experience just understanding your waterfall cannot go to the to the side it has to it's going to yep. fall down what it can be changed direction on rocks and we talk about that in later classes but understanding the direction of line and how it tells you where objects are because it's all flat <laughs> you know these are all such interesting paintings like I, you could paint the same waterfall 10 times to refine your skill and i'd be imagined that by the time you did the same waterfall the 10th time it would be a dramatically different waterfall uh lindsay says is thick body paint like big body paint or huge body paint I'm going to be really honest, um, Lindsay, I have not heard paint refer referred to as big body or huge body. Huh. So you may be referring to a specialty product, and I would refer back to their um, material info. Because the reason I say this is that there are new paints out now that are highly textural, Oops. highly um, bodied paints that are beyond a heavy body paint. And they may be in an effort to make sure that they seem different in the brand market, they may be um, calling themselves something different. And so it might be very, very different. Like uh, Gafferty paint is not heavy body paint. It's a whole nother level of paint, right? It's a whole nother level of stiff body paint. So I, I, they might be calling themselves something like that. And I'm not currently aware of that. All right, trees. Oh, goodness gracious. We did some things here. Oh, this one I had to I had to throw in some trees, right? And I got to do a rainbow. I do a lot of rainbow trees. If you're painting with me over the last seven years, you've seen a lot of rainbow trees. Um, and I like this because now this is an interesting thing that you probably didn't know that this taught you. We did work on creating the idea that water is a mirror and how reflection happens in water, right? Water is a mirror. Mm -hmm. um, but we also worked on this skill here of going through a rainbow teaches you to rinse out and clean your brush and get to the next color. Super important landscape skill, right? Yep. To get a color out and get to the next color. Whenever you have paint a rainbow, you have to really be, you either have to have seven brushes or you have to clean the brush you have. We also learned the concept of how to create a tree shape using our fan brush. We learned some fan brush skills here, which are really good. The but we also learned the concepts of how the trees are shaped, right? Little pointy bits at the top and the directionality of branches. We looked at how to create reflections in water. Right. Mm -hmm. I got asked a lot of great questions like how long is should the reflection be, which depends on the position of the light and the position of the viewer. Right. Where you're standing, where the light is, can change those reflections uh, just like it changes shadows. Um, so, you know, in this, it's a little bit decorative in that way. And we just made an arbitrary decision of light placement because it's, you know, there's the, the little center light. But the idea that these trees will reflect in the water and the water is a mirror to what is happening around it is taught. And then we also added light reflections again, practicing that skill again. We worked on our uh, gesture in this. And then we did texture to create, we did perspective. Believe it or not, you did some one point perspective here just to give you the idea that objects are wider and they become narrow as they approach the horizon line. Things that your brain starts to put together in its little art box of, oh, stuff I know now. Yeah. Right? Stuff you know now. And we did some dry brushing for some wood. All right. My bridge was not centered. All right. I don't, Ashley accidentally uh, deleted that. I don't think that was intentional. Sorry, Crystal. Uh, sometimes, like, when we're modding, we have little moments. Huh. We have goofies. <laughs> we're trying to say like or reply or whatever, and we get it. But that was... That was, you did not do anything. Um, sometimes the bridge wasn't centered. Sometimes you might have had trouble kind of orienting the bridge. And and if you change the placement of the bridge, by the way, you would change the perspective. The reason I do this is one point perspective is the first concept in perspective and painting. 
for linear perspective, that's where lines are objects that are man-made. Um, you learn diminishing uh, lines and how they converge and all those kinds of things. So it was very, very important. Mm -hmm. All right. Are we ready for the next one? I think. Oh, are. I see what it is. Uh, that's okay. Crystal can have cap locks on. It's all right. It's not thrown. It happens. It happens. I get my cap lock. Once I had a phone that wouldn't hang up. That really was very bad for me once. Because <laughs> I couldn't exit a conversation I needed to get out of. Sometimes our tech fails us. Don't worry. It's all good. It's no problem. All right. So, this one. We did some interesting things here. This we, one. This one. <laughs> oh. <laughs> We're at that the Zen stones. Zen stones. Why does gut distract you? Zen stones. Um, so the concept of this, again, we, we did some neutralized blues, right? So we created some blue on blue on green kind of space. How do we create value between very similar or harmonious colors? Um, we did some gestural work on the lines. We did object placement. How objects are placed in the canvas tells us where they exist, right? We did some cool uh, form and gesture and shape reflections through here. We also created how do we layer something to build up an object like a flower. And we did, again, another version of reflection, but with more movement in the water on Water as a Mirror. So do you want to show that? Yeah. Yay, hands. Nope, not that one. This one. <laughs> I swear I know what I'm doing back here. I've been doing it uh, all week. Pushing all week. The all week. So you can see that here. Like we talked about, like we know this flower is in front of these rocks because these petals go over that. We worked over like how do we correct for the transparency of something light that has to go over something dark. Couldn't have been more contrasted than this. So we reinforced those skills. The way that the colors could blend and meld on movement, moving water is an important thing to understand. Sometimes when there's a little ripple or flow to the water, it's not a mirror, but there is reflection. Um, we did some good lighting on our rocks to create that sense of how how do we create that sense of these being rounded um, when they're clearly so flat, you know, they're just flat little black rocks. How do we do that? So we did some value rounding and we really kind of came to that. I'm going to. Um, so that was a lot of fun. And then very importantly, how do we do this lotus flower? How do we do this flower? So we did these back petals and we drew them and we layered them in and layered them in and then did the front. And that's how we created something that was a bowl that was three dimensional. Something we have to do in flowers all the time is this concept of what petals we paint in what order to create form in the, you're just never going to get out or get that rose out or any of those lotuses out or any of those peonies out unless we get that sense of what petals are painted at what point in the painting. How do we layer objects to create their space, right? Painting the furthest thing away and then coming forward to that which is closest to us to create detail. All right. There we go. Okay, let's go. I'm going to switch this over and then we're going to close it with a fun one because you got to close the course. I always try to close with something fun, hmm. something that's enjoyable. I close I April fun. with fun stuff. I tend to close our big programs with something fun. So we got a corgi puppy uh, for my oldest kid and uh, she, her name is Shortcake and she is the red face tricolor, but brown was going to be a lot for you guys. So we did the blondie corgi. Yeah. <laughs> and this was just kind of a fun one because we pulled some of those things together and we got to talk a little bit about fur and line directionality and all of that. But really, we just pulled, if you want to go to the table, we just Absolutely. pulled, um, we just pulled what we had together, right? We did some reflections. We did object placement layering. We did line. We draw, we, we placed a very complex shape. Right? We, I showed you guys how we put in a complex shape. And we did brown mm. with primary colors. But I didn't do it to you all. I really thought about, am I going to do brown to you guys the whole time? And I realized brown is going to be just such a misery for so many people. We just did this bit of brown. I have a whole video on how to mix brown without brown. But this is all we did to you. Because brown can be one of those colors that to create a chromatic brown using primaries can mm -hmm. be a whole journey. Yeah. It's a all right. So did you guys know that you did that much? That's what you did. That's pretty incredible. That's what you did. Okay. Will there be a course for the two who... There might be, Cheryl. I actually was talking with John about that. I definitely will keep revisiting uh, the one hoot course, Making Better or Better. Um, pretty consistently, but I think I may also add two hoot and I may include a watercolor version of this over at the watercolor channel. 
So I know that that's something I'm going to expand into. Uh, Glennis says, now that we are one hoop painters, what do you suggest we do to become two hoop painters? Tune do, in next year. Do paintings. <laughs> <laughs> paintings. So one hoot is just trying to get that core set of concepts down. Mm -hmm. um, those are projects that I generally keep to about an hour. The colors are not super complex and the techniques are not overly layered or complex. Um, and, and to really grow your skills into that two hoot range, you want to do a bunch of one hoot paintings. I would do 20. In my experience, there are breakthroughs. There's a breakthrough at about painting 10, a breakthrough at about painting 20, a breakthrough at about painting 50, and a breakthrough at about painting 100. This is generalized. Just having watched people do paintings and see when they had their like aha moments and go, oh, they're about paint. You know, maybe it's painting 12 or 8, but it's in that range, right? That's when about it happens. So the, the thing for you to do, and, um, you know, I talk about it a little bit in the certificate page, is do more. Do more. Now it's time to go on. So coming out of this course, what are you ready to do? You're ready to do all my one hoots. You're ready to do all the one hoot paintings. You're ready to do other people's classes. And if they have a failure in their instruction, you will have enough core knowledge to bridge it. Right? Because sometimes people teach and they're really demoing. I get this feedback a lot. I hear this from people all the time. They took a course here at the Annex or they did, you know, a lecture. Or they went to a paint party and it's, they're, they're not teaching as much as demoing. They're explaining some of what they do, but not all of what they do with these core skills from this course. You should be able to handle most beginner classes that you could go take at your local, at your local uh, resources or online. Um, oh yeah, the certificates. All right, so this is the certificate and this is a very important certificate and here's why. Well, let, well, let, me, let me finish, keep it up there, but I'm gonna finish what you guys have learned. You may not be ready quite yet to just paint from your uh, trip photos, but you're closer. You will under, you may find my two hoop paintings, especially when they're like on the two and a half, range, a half range to be a stretch. But now what I'm talking about won't seem like a foreign language. And you will understand why I'm doing what I'm doing in my three hoop paintings. Even if you're not ready for, you know, a 20 hour painting session, you know, or something crazy like that, you'll understand why I'm making the choices that I make. There's a core set of skills and, and art concepts that you now possess that will carry forward. So because of that, the certificate says uh, one hoop painter achievement award, because you guys have really did the work, right? Is presented by the art Sherpa too. And then, you know, in our example, we did Shelly Sherpa, but you would have your own name in there. In recognition of completing the first steps in a lifelong journey of art. See how I like said you have to keep painting? <laughs> <laughs> They have the knowledge and skill of a one hoop painter and should refer to themselves from this day forward as an artist. Officially now, you're an artist. There's no reason to not call yourself an artist at all, except some space in your head where you're getting in your own head. You have done 10 paintings. To be an artist, you do art. You know, in some cases, more than many working artists, you know stuff now. Mm -hmm. You know stuff. What a bristle is, right? Art stuff. And if you don't, go back and watch the video because you want to know the difference between tackle and a bristle. Terms. Um, and we are all now terms. certifiable. Right. You are certifiable. 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 Um, so on the free download, again, I'm not grading your test. Just, you know, you do need to give me an email that I can reach you. You do need to answer the questions. You don't have to answer them correctly. It's okay to get one wrong. It just helps me know what I got to work on. You do need to upload a pic, either one picture of all 10 paintings, 10 individual of them. You could do, ten, I gave you up to 10 files that you could do, or a video. You could just video them and be like, I'm done. So all of that's there. And then um, seven to 14 days after that, you'll get an email with us to a link for you to get your downloadables. Your downloadable will be a certificate that you can fill out and date yourself and you can print out and put that on the wall. Um, you can uh, get a profile pic and a Facebook banner that, and you can go check out my Facebook page if you want to see what those look like. But they're your, I did this for the Art Eagles and everybody really liked it where you can sit there and say officially, I'm a one who painter, right? And, and, and it says art happens, which I like on the banner. I like that. And I also, I optimize those for mobile and desktop so your banner won't look crazy on your phone or your desktop. Because I'm, consider it like that. Now, on the certifications, uh, we have one that 
if you want, and I'll get this out, and I don't know if John can zoom in on it or if it's... Uh, yeah. It's Hold okay if you cannot. Uh, I don't know where I put all the... I, I put pins everywhere. I have all these pins. Let's see so here if I can do something. Like, if you want, because this was a big deal journey for many of you. You guys put a lot of work into this. You guys put a lot of heart into this. And I get what that's like. And I, and one of the things I've wanted to do for a while, and John has really wanted to do for a while, is badges and pins and things. So if you want to go to the website, um, you can, after you fill out the form, where you get all the free resources, that's included. But then you are, can purchase your One Hoot certificate from us. And we will print it on uh, Fabriano. What's the GSM on the paper? Heavy paper. Uh, we're we're, print it on, we're gonna print it on a really nice paper, and it'll and be a hand fill it out. And I'm gonna hand sign it and date it, and it's gonna be press stamped from the studio. And you will get your one hoot pin. Pin. Now, just and so this you is guys... your showcase. You know how sometimes there's a showcase certificate that you can frame and you put up. That's your pretty one. They'll, it'll be your pretty one. So it'll be just like this, but this will be stamped. And hand filled out by me, and it won't say Shelly Sherbet, it'll say your name. Um, we're a uh, couple of things to know about the one that you buy off the store. Um, one, you've got to fill out the certificate, so you know, you've got that press pr process done. Two, if you're international, we need to email each other because there may be a difference in shipping. We deduct what we pay for shipping in the US, and so you don't pay, pay ex extra, just the difference. Um, cause well, in the U S we include shipping. So for you guys international, we just deduct that amount that we provide on shipping. For, does that make sense? Am I making yeah, any sense? I'll, 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 so this, if you guys are international and you'd like to purchase, just email us and we'll help you out. Yes. This is a, this is a way that you guys can help support our studio. Yes. That's really all this is. This is a really, you know, this, you can download this, have one for free, yeah. but if you'd like to have a pin and have it signed by us, you can help support our studio by purchasing that and it helps us make these courses and we appreciate it. Right. So, and those, those will be mailed out, you know, seven to 10 days from receiving them. So Sherpa soon. Sherpa soon. That general, cause it's me. And that means. Amy's that like badges. <laughs> it's going to be 10 minutes late. <laughs> going to be 10 minutes late in Sherpa soon. No, it's, there's definitely Sherpa time. Yeah, I definitely you, am on Sherpa we, time. But we get there, when we get there, there's a lot and it's flair. So there's flair and there's stuff. And so if, and again, you can just do the download free one. If it's not in budget, I, I didn't want to make it like an, a barrier. This is just for if this is something that you want. Could you get the free now and then order one later? Yeah. Can you finish this Absolutely. course anytime? Yeah. Yeah. This is all in you. This is just at your pleasure. These are, these are. Pleasure in your leisure. Yeah. Pleasure in your leisure. Pins. But you get, this is the pin. The one hoot pin. So those of you who saw us giving away pins and wondering, what were they about? This is yeah. what they were about. This is, we were working our way up to this. Right working now, our way up to this. You can bet for sure this is the first of many. Acrylic April people, watch out. Uh-huh. Of really cool pins that are coming our way. <laughs> Amy, did anyone show you the secret handshake? Uh, Dan, if it takes months for us to complete it, can we still purchase the printed certificate and pin? Yeah. yeah. This is yeah. We, we, we plan, we're hoping that this will stay up year round mm -hmm. and you guys can, we can always order more pins. Yeah. We'll do the certificate. It's a great way for you guys to help support our show. And we just, we appreciate you doing this with us. Yeah. And here's the thing, guys. I will probably, as I learn from this, I'll update this course. I, one of the things, you know, we let 2016 Big Art Quest sit too long. Right? I feel. But now we know not to do that. And no. so there will be updates. There will be refinements. That, and so this is this is a forever course. This is something that we'll come back to year after year. We'll visit, we'll refine, we'll cover, you know, certain stuff deeper and we'll realize some stuff didn't need to be covered. Now to answer Crystal's question, mm. the prices on the website and the reason we don't announce it is because sometimes our prices change on like how we have to deliver things and yeah. do shipping. So we're going to keep that price. And as also, we don't want to put people can. in the position where they have to to comment. If so, the reason we always like on on the retreats, like I we have a retreat coming up with my mom. If you want to know about that, uh, write support at thearchirpa dot com and get on the email email list to be one of the people to hear about the art retreat with my mom early. Um, which is coming soon, which is coming soon. So if you want to get on that list, but it's not an inexpensive retreat. 
No. Um, for a whole variety of reasons, including I got to make sure my mom is compensated really well. Well, it's because we I love her of, since my mom. We take care of everything. It's yeah. a very but it's not inexpensive, and but, I don't like to put people in that position where they have to converse. Where they're, I think budget is a fluid experience where sometimes we have more resources and sometimes we have less, and we should never feel any feelings of worth or lack of worth around our finances. I don't think what's in our bank account has anything to do with what we're worth as people. It just, no. It's just an exchange for goods and services, right? So I never want to put people in that position where they have to converse where they're at. And so I try to have a free option. Like at the retreat, we have a meetup. That's free. You come to the meetup for free, right? And so that way, wherever you're at in the journey, there's I always try to have some free version of something if I know people are going to... Yeah. A lot of people are going to want it. I never want people to feel left out. And I never want people to feel like they've got to justify what this month's current financial thing is. Like, we have the ups and downs. We have times when we have more resources and we have times when we have less less resources. And I'll tell you what, I don't like to apologize for that. And I will absolutely have it out with anyone who tries to make me apologize for the fact that finances are fluid. Mm-hmm. They just are. Oh, thank you, Rita. And that's and that's why with our patrons, we have a flexible patronage where you set your patronage. Because some months it might be $5, some months it might be upwards of I don't know what. That's right. Life is fluid. We just don't know what the future will hold. If 2020 taught us anything is we cannot predict the future. And we just want you guys here painting with us more than anything. More than anything. So that's what it's all about. Now, I cannot wait to see, again, you have to make the solemn swear that you're not going to be hard on yourself if you missed a question. It does not matter. If you have any problems with the uploading process, and John, do you want to do the video walkthrough so we can show them how they go through that, how they would find it and do that? Uh, did you oh. wanted to do it. Did you, did you see me send that over? I did not, but if you give me just a moment, I'll have it. I'll let John find that. So I did do a video walkthrough so you could see me go from the website to the Google, this is a Google form. Oh. In the Google form, you uh, you would go to the beginner acrylic uh, button. Oh, it's okay. Um, yeah, I could do it on my laptop. Let me show you through my laptop. Here, guys, I'm gonna take you to um, to the form. So I was looking up a chicken recipe. <laughs> chicken recipes, just in, guys. Here you go. No, it's fine. Artsherpa.com. It knows me. That's my real. I'm never up on. I'm never on anything. I can't be outed for on the internet. <laughs> the feds are not coming for me because they'll be like, oh, "Here's what I watch a lot of Korean rom coms, and then I get fascinated about the food and I look up the recipes." This is literally what happens there. <laughs> so you come to the website and you see the beginner acrylic painting course. Boom! Push it. And this is everything that you need. This is your resources. Whenever you do this course, it's always collected here. And now their certificate is there and you can see the profile pic that you could get and the banner that you could get and the certificate. Mm-hmm. And then you go there. Whoop. Oh, okay. I was trying to. Oh, there you go. All right. So here you come down and it's people know my Gmail. So that's not a big deal because that's on my like contact. Though write support at theartsherpa.com because I use my uh, heart sherpa as a business Gmail. So this tells you some stuff about the quiz and you can read that. I recommend it so you feel proud of yourself. And then you're gonna put in your email. Don't skip that part, that's necessary. And this reminds you what you did. And this asks you some questions that you did in the course, like a quiz. <laughs> <laughs> Don't panic, just, just answer your best. It just lets me know if I need to cover something better or if I'm doing a good job. Sometimes I have to work on making my stuff shorter and more digestible, more concise. Maybe I need the mini books out earlier. There's things I might need to do. But these are some questions. And now here's one. Um, this is an important one. It doesn't matter how you answer it, uh, but it's may we share your paintings or feedback on our website, newsletter, and also on social media for promotional purposes only, uh, and just generally because we're proud of your work. So what that means is like uh, there's a place to give feedback on this form and you're uploading your paintings, is if, if it's okay with you, if I share that on something, on a newsletter, on social media, on a, um, you know, in those kinds of ways that I, a person online might do, right? And there, are you comfortable with that? Because I think it's really important to ask consent. So I'm asking for consent of sharing. I don't, just, I don't like paint on people's artwork without permission. You know what I'm saying? So I just consent. 
Um, and then I, I give you the prompter. Did you complete all 10 paintings? Because <laughs> that's important. And then here you go. Here's where please upload all 10 paintings in J, JPG format. Um, you may send all 10 in one image, all 10 images separately. You may also send them as a video. If it glitches, please email support at thearcher.com and we'll be sure to include your email and name and your name on the website so we can find you. But you no. would go there, you would add file, and you select file, select from your device. And that's the same on desktop or your phone or any of it, wherever you've got your pictures stored of your artwork. Um, and again, you could just put all paintings against the 10 paintings against the wall and take a picture. Now, is um, all of that splatter an effect of our website? This is my work laptop, and it sometimes sees damage. It sees clatter. It has some collateral damage, and I need to get the rubbing alcohol. Some paint on. spray. Some paint spray. <laughs> all right, it's a, but it tells you this is required. So these questions are all required, and then it asks you what's your favorite part of the course. You could just give a one-word answer if you don't want to give me a big blurb. I, I, I do require that of you, but you don't have to give me a big answer. The better answer you give me, the better. So what was your favorite part? What would you love? And were there any questions that you still had after the course? That's a... Uh, and then this tells you, oh, there's your One Hoot Painter Achievement Award that you could be downloading, right? And here's your profile pic that you could put on Facebook. And here's your banner. Look at that. Isn't that a cute banner? It's flip, but it says art happens. So that people... Okay, no, so this is important. Me. This is important. Okay. Send me a copy of my responses if you want a copy. And then submit. If you don't hit the submit button, I'll never know you were there. I tell you, this is going to be the number one place people have problems. Submit. Uh, nope. I'm just saying, it's online. That's where it's hard. This is, this is all linked off the website. Yep, this is all linked off the website. And I'm going to see if I can go back to the website. Um, so everything is like right here. You can see all that right here. Oh, and then if you want to go to the store, the that's store. where you would find the certificate. It was right there. Among other things. That are for sale. Yeah. So, let's see. Lady, someone was asking, what device are you using? Right there. It's an old, really old iPad. We've been turning no, it's the last on. year's iPad. No, it's not last year's iPad. It's Maybe a really I... old iPad. We've had it since... Uh, um, Maybe. Yeah. No. Yeah. You uh, can look it up. It's like an iPad. I think it's a, it's it's like it, it's, it's the no. last generation. No. No, oh, I'll <laughs> it's look okay. it up. It's a... I love it, and I'm happy with it, and I don't upgrade till I need to. So I don't even know which one it is. It's a pro. If you look yeah, at it, it's I in the pro it. line, but it's the first gen. I think it was the first pro that came out. It was like a minute ago, and it's an armor. You can look at it. I know because it doesn't work. It, it doesn't work with a lot of stuff because it's not it's not updatable now. At a certain point, mm. I hit some thresholds. Um, so you know that's how they get you with the tech, isn't it? They make it updatable and that kind of thing. They're like, ah ha 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 ha! You have to get new because otherwise you can't operate any of the software that you like. And I'm like, err, you have me over the barrel. I don't know why I'm a pirate right now. So, uh, oh, Trisha asked a really good question. Do each of the kids need their own Art Sherpa account to submit their art? No, because they um should be able to do it. So, uh, Trisha, because you, uh, I, I have some idea. Um, I have all my kids have their own uh, Google accounts because of Google Classrooms being such a fantastic resource, and they're all homeschooling. So they will need their own Google accounts. I, um, but I can also like if you're a homeschool mom and you're having trouble with the submission because you're submitting for multiple people in your family, it would work. Um, if you wanted to like take pictures of everybody's artwork and then just put that in a note in the what you liked about the course or the feedback. Mm -hmm. um, or you can email us at support at the and I'll help you. I make sure all the kids get a certificate. Right. Because once you get access to the certificate, you can print them out and fill them the free certificates. You can print them out and, and um, uh, uh, fill them out for everyone. So you could print them out multiple times. Um, so you'd be able to do them for an entire family and fill them out and have them up. Um, and you can, um, also have, uh, I'm not sure on the limits on Google forms because hmm. I think each time you go through, you've got to do it as a different Google, Google thing. But I do recommend having Google accounts for kids just so they can do Google classroom because Google classroom is cool. Yeah. It's very cool. Um, but again, if that's just not possible, you know me, I'm flexible and I am not here to keep kids from their certificates. <laughs> 
way. So you could just read out the things and they could just take the quiz and you could be their spokesperson for that and then print out multiple certificates and um, we'll just know that. And you can just leave me a note. Hmm. Any homeschool mom reading this too could know that as well. Because I homeschool my kids, so I get it. I do it through the school, but I totally get it because it's like a whole thing. I super, super get that. That was a good question. Thank you for asking that. I would have been like, oh, no, I missed a very important one. Um, so, yeah. Yeah. Now, on the ones that are free from the website, it comes with the name empty and the date empty and the digital signature. So you would fill in the person's name or your name and you would fill in um, the date that whenever you printed it out. And then it's got a digital signature from me. If you purchase it from the website, you need to tell me the names that you want on the certificates. Um, and uh, I'll take care of the date and everything. So I hand write that out. If you're doing multiples, um, maybe we can also do something on that. So write us about that. If you're going to do like a, a grip of certificates, hmm. like, you know, email us email us um thank you for the party is it disco time says jenna bug <laughs> yeah um is there a time limit says sarah to get the certificate no time limit i'm not putting a time limit up that these are up if i'm here and i'm online and these videos exist the certificate is out there because mm -hmm. i just i'm not going to keep somebody from the reward of doing the hard work it's just not happening and yeah we should do it we did it we did it we painted a painting. We painted 10 of them and we learned about all the techniques and the mixing and the studio and all the other things we needed to know. We did it. We did it. We are one who artists now. Woo! That was terrible. I don't <laughs> go into a music career for so many reasons. Uh, yeah, just like, thank you for addressing that. I caught most of it. I'll re-listen and re-watch when my internet is, isn't being glitchy. I think the most important thing is, is if you have an unusual need around the certificate, email us mm -hmm. and we'll, we'll help you. We'll help you. And unusual just means like, you're not just going to the form and printing it out and filling it out yourself or going to the website and you're just like, if you're going to the website and just getting one and you've just got your name and don't worry about it. But if you're like, you know, I did it at a, at a, like, say if you did this course at an adult living facility and you want to get printed certificates for everybody and you need some help with that, we'll, we'll help you out. Yeah. We'll Just make that email much, us. Yeah. Email us. If you have a special need in any way that's beyond how our system is just organically set up, we will help you. So just email us what it is and we will work that out teachers, uh, you know, moms, all the people. Just email us and we will work it out. We will help you. Pins! <laughs> I told you they were for something. Mm -hmm. We're going to have a lot of those coming. We're going to have a lot of those coming. If you thought this was cool, and definitely give me feedback if you do Acrylic April, I am thinking about including a similar process at the end of Acrylic April. Um and uh, pin in a similar kind of certification thing and maybe even retroactively letting people go back. So if you think that that would be cool, because um, you guys work pretty hard on Acrylic April too, definitely let me know in the comments below. Let me know in the comments below what you thought of the course. Anything you want to, any feedback you want to give me, just let me know. I'm here to read it. And by the way, guys, congratulations, because you did do it. And hopefully this video helps you realize how much you actually did do. Yeah. Because it's a big deal. And the certificate's cute, but the work was serious and substantial. And just because we have fun with it doesn't mean it wasn't fundamentally super important in your journey as an artist. Be good to yourselves. Be good to each other. And I do want to see you in an easel really soon tomorrow because it's like the 12 days of Christmas are starting. So I'll see you for the painting Sunday at 1 p.m. Bye-bye.